All right, so these are some notes on section 1.4. Um, you got a copy of the notes last class, so you just need to fill in this information um, and then look at the homework for this. So section 1.4 is talking about linear functions, and those are functions that form straight lines. So when we graph them, we should see a, a linear or a line on our graph. So these lines involve something called slope, and the rate of change is the slope. The rise over run is the slope. Um, the delta x or delta, sorry, delta y over delta x or the change in y over change in x is considered the slope. So with a linear function, the slope, the rate of change is constant. It will be the same amount every single time. Um, so with the slope, there's a formula that we can use, and it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So what this means is that you're taking the second y minus the first y, and the second x minus the first x. So in this example, I have two ordered pair. So if I graph those ordered pair, it'd be at 1, 2, and at 3, and I'm asking you for the slope between those two points. So this would be the first x, the first y, the second x, and the second y, and it can change. And I'm going to write 6 minus 2 over 3 minus 1, and then I get 4 over 2, so the slope is 2 over 1. So that means from this point I can rise 2 and run 1, and I would hit another point on the line. Rise 2 and run 1, and I hit another point on the line. So that's what the slope means. It's the constant rate of change between the points. So here's another example. Find the slope between these two points, negative 3, 4, and 1, negative 2. So I'm going to call this x1, y1, x2, y2. So you're going to do negative 2 minus 4 and 1 minus negative 3, so you get negative 6 over 4, which reduces to negative 3 over 2. So if I graph these two points, negative 3, positive 4, and 1, negative 2, oops, wrong place, sorry, 1, negative 2, okay, if I look at this line, if I look at the slope, that means I'm going up 3 to the left 2, and if I repeat that, I will end up right where I started with. So that's a constant rate of change. So when we talk about a horizontal line, a horizontal line has a slope of 0, and a vertical line has an undefined slope. So vertical lines go straight up and down, and horizontal lines are going across. So a horizontal line has a slope of 0, and a vertical line has a slope that is undefined. If we talk about parallel lines, two lines that are parallel have the same slope. So they have different y-intercepts, but usually the same slope. And slopes of perpendicular lines are, the slopes of perpendicular lines are negative reciprocals. So let's talk about that a little bit more. Oops, sorry. So here's a little chart. So if I have the slope of a line and it is 2 over 3, then the slope of the line parallel to that one would also be 2 over 3. And the slope of the perpendicular line would be the reciprocal, which is 3 over 2, and the opposite sign, which would be negative 3 over 2. So that's what I mean by negative reciprocal. If the slope is 2, then the slope of the line parallel to that would be 2, and the perpendicular slope would be negative 1 half. If my slope of my line is negative 5 thirds, then the parallel line would also be negative 5 thirds, and the perpendicular line would be 3 over 5. Here's another one. Horizontal lines have a slope of 0. So a slope that's parallel to that would be 0, and a perpendicular line would be a vertical line, right? And that has a slope that's undefined, because technically it's 1 over 0, which is undefined. Okay, so let's go back to our notes a little bit more. 
Okay, so um, slope intercept form is this form y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y intercept. So if I give you a problem like this and I say f of x, which is the same thing as saying y equals 2x minus 1. So here's my equation. 2 is the slope, or 2 over 1, and the y-intercept is negative 1. So to graph that, we're going to go to the y-intercept first. All right. okay, so we're going to go to our y-intercept first. So here's our y-intercept at negative 1. And then from that point, we're going to go up 2, up two to the right one. There's a next point. And I can keep doing that. Up two to the right one. Up two to the right one. So when I connect those lines together, those dots together, I get the equation y equals 2x minus 1. So this pink line right here is my equation y equals 2x minus 1. Alright, so here's another example. I have 2 thirds x plus 1. So the slope is 2 over 3, and the y-intercept is positive 1. So I go to positive 1 on my graph, which is right here, and then from there I'm going to go up 2 to the right 3, and there's another point. I could also go back to that 1, and I could go down 2 to the left 3, because then I'm just basically changing both my signs. So this line right here represents the equation 2 thirds x plus 1. Here's another one. Slope is negative 3 over 5. Y-intercept is 2. So the slope, uh, the y-intercept is positive 2, so I'm going to go to positive 2 first. And then from there I'm going to go up 3 to the left 5. Or I could go down 3 to the right 5. So those points are all on that line. So that's the equation of the line, that's the formula for the line, y equals 3 fifths x, negative 3 fifths x, plus 2. So if a slope is negative, that means it is rising to the left, or you can think of it as falling to the right, um, or it's going to be negative on the right-hand side. If a slope is positive, it's going to rise to the right, okay? So keep that in mind. Alright, so this next example, I have 2x minus 3y equals 6. Well, this is what we call general form. So in order to uh, graph it using slope and y-intercept, I would have to change it to slope-intercept form. So to do that, I'm going to move that x to the other side. And then I want it to just be y equals, so I'm going to divide everything by negative 3. So 6 divided by negative 3 is negative 2. And negative 2 divided by negative 3 is positive 2 thirds. So my slope would be 2 thirds, and my y-intercept would be negative 2, even though it's rearranged. See, the slope is always the number with x. So then when I graph that, I'm going to graph the negative 2 first. So here's my negative 2. And then from there, I'm going to go up 2, and then over 3. And so this line right here is the graph of 2x minus 3 equals 6. Okay, and I'm going to show you on the next page another way of graphing that instead of using slope and y-intercept. I'm sorry, yeah, instead of using slope and y-intercept. Alright, so here's another example. So here we're talking about um, these problems are in, you know, talking about standard form and general form, or in slope intercept form. So if I give you this problem, which is y equals negative 3 fifths x plus 2, and I say write it in general form or standard form, I'm going to do that by getting rid of the fraction. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the problem by 5. So when I multiply this side by 5, I get 5y. When I multiply this side by 5, I have to distribute. So negative 3 fifths times 5 over 1 and then I'm going to do 2 times 5. So the 5y carries down. On this one, the 5's cancel out, and I'm left with negative 3x. And then 2 times 5 is 10. 
And then my last step is to move that 3x to the other side. So when I move it to the other side, it becomes positive. So standard form would be 3x plus 5y equals 10. So when we're dealing with graphing calculators, a lot of times we need to put problems in slope-intercept form. So you need to be able to go back and forth and see the different ways. Okay, so here's another example. I have y equals 2 thirds x plus 1. I want to get rid of the fraction, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. So this becomes 3y. Remember again, I have to distribute this. So this becomes 2x plus 3. And then I'm going to move that 2x to the other side, so it becomes negative 2x plus 3 equals 3. Um, a lot of times they'll say in standard form you can't have the negatives in front, but I'm not really picky about that, so either way will work. Okay, so here's that problem from the front again. And what we notice here is now, I'm asking you to do this one by x-intercept and y-intercept instead of um, slope and y-intercept. So x-intercept means I'm going to set the y value to 0 and solve the problem. So if I set this y equal to 0, I'm going to end up with this problem. The 3 times 0 basically cancels out, and I'm left with 2x equals 6 and then I can divide by 2 and get x equals 3. On this one, for the y-intercept, I'm going to set x equal to 0, so I get the x equals 0 here, and that means that's going to go away. I'm left with negative 3y equals 6, divide by negative 3, and y equals negative 2. So the x-intercept is written as an ordered pair, 3, 0, and the y-intercept is written as 0, negative 2. So now if I graph those two points, 3, 0 is right here, and 0, negative 2 is right here. If I graph just those two points, I have the line. And I could do this instead of converting that to slope-intercept form. So this is something to keep in mind. It's a lot easier sometimes. Okay, so I'm going to stop here, and um, I'll put another video out there for the second part.